of reading are we all veterans of reading yes or no yes yeah i think is only is the only person who is saying is a veteran of reading i presume all of you are veterans of reading because you have been reading throughout your lifetime reading writing exams reams and reams of paper am i right that's why i say you are all veterans of reading but this reading comprehension i think calls for a different focus that's the reason i'm standing here okay you are reading here with an intent with an intent where there are some questions which are staring at you and you will have to answer these questions okay in your examinations perhaps you have this one question and you write your answers but here you have this passage which is staring at you and then questions multiple choice questions answers right now i don't say it's a difficult task but nevertheless i think it calls for some focus when it may sound a bit too easy a reading comprehension chalta hai we can always manage this but don't be complacent don't be complacent why because these passages are very carefully constructed very carefully constructed and there is dense thought in each of these passages dense thought okay it's not like uh, probably some guides which are available in the market okay because each subject has its own guides and these guides provide so many things for us and yeah okay we prepare some notes or or we bank on some textbooks or sometimes uh, rely on our seniors notes okay and then write our exams but here passages are very carefully constructed right the essay which i am going to give you or it has already been circulated to the sol maybe in a couple of minutes from now but before that i thought just share some thoughts on these passages passages okay they can be narrative passages very simple okay narrative in the sense of simple stories it's a simple story it is fine taken from some novel or any short event the autobiography or some other type if that is the case you don't have a problem right then we have a descriptive type passages descriptive slightly complex than the narrative ones okay well uh, there again it could be uh, uh, a scenic beauty of osmani university campus descriptive okay uh, well uh, i know osmani university has its own scenic beauty you may not have explored but please explore having come to osmani university then you have some factual or informative kind of essays <coughs> you have abstracts abstracts which are which are basically philosophical in nature you have in or you have analytical essays sometimes i don't know how many of you are in the habit of uh, reading the editorials in newspapers okay there is analysis of uh, different different events which are happening in the world maybe trying to explain certain things to you where there are claims and counter claims and uh, there is a definite structure as to how these passages are composed 
first and foremost, when you are reading, you will have to understand that language operates at two levels. At two levels. One is at the surface structure level and the other is at the deep structure level. Also referred to as connotative levels and denotative levels. Am I clear? Surface structure. The meaning of a sentence may be obvious. Okay? Then there may be a hidden meaning behind. I think that is something which you have to constantly distinguish. What is the author trying to say in this particular sentence? I'll give you a simple example. Okay, let us say you have a friend who is not so good at singing, but he sings. So in just to please him, you say, oh, yeah, wonderful, you are a good singer. You don't mean that. You don't? That's a different thing. You may be as well saying, you bloody shut your mouth. Is that clear? Two levels of operation of language, that's why every sentence which you are going to read. Okay, this is not an exercise where you are going to do some hop, skip and jump. Skimming, what is called as? Skimming. Skimming does not work here. You have to read word by word. Word by word. Sentence by sentence. Paragraph by paragraph. Okay? To understand the relationships between words, sentences and paragraphs. Okay? It may sound, okay, this is something which we all know, but I don't know. How many of you actually read so seriously? Yesterday, when uh, the research is telling us today that our reading habits have gone down across the world, across ages. Okay, we are now more hooked to maybe social media or WhatsApp or whatever, but general reading, not only mainstream media, but also social media, all these platforms, our reading has come down. When our reading has come down, our cognitive capabilities have also come down. The ability to understand, the ability to gain knowledge, acquire knowledge has also come with us. Okay? Why? Because we are getting used to these fleeting messages, fleeting messages which we don't register, which we don't register. We just consume this information passively. Even when you are reading a newspaper or an editorial or a novel or whatever, it is just passive reading. What is called for here is active reading, active critical reading. Active critical reading. What does that mean? Are you questioning each and every sentence, each and every claim? Are you able to distinguish between fact and opinion? Fact and opinion. Are you able to identify the assumptions? Are you questioning these assumptions? I don't know, please ask yourself whether you do this when you are reading. Are you examining the claims and counterclaims in arguments? Please ask yourself. If you are not doing this, at least for this exercise, I think you should do this. That is what is active reading, critical reading, where you are sifting between Fact then opinion. Because facts and opinions are very uh, uh, <coughs> intricately or very craftily woven together. That is something we have to constantly examine, review. The second aspect which I said is where you will have to question assumptions. Question? Assumptions. Oh, please don't drive so close to this lady or to this uh, uh, truck, okay. you may be following a truck, you may be cleaning a truck. By making this statement, you are assuming that the truck driver is not so well trained. Not so well trained. There are assumptions you are making. When you make assumptions, one of my managers used to say, don't assume things. Because if you assume things, you make an ass out of you and me. You split that word. Okay? So, don't just consume information like that. Is there an assumption? Okay? 
the chief executive of a particular airline has caused irrepar irreparable damage to the organization. The company is running into losses. So let us bring a CEO of a jewelry company. Of a jewelry company because that person, when he was managing this, he started from a scratch and today he is running into profits. Running into profits. Is there an assumption here? A company executive not performing so well. They want to kick him out. They want to bring in someone else. Why? Because this person has performed well. What is the assumption? Is there an assumption? What is the assumption? That this fellow will come and change the fortune of the company. You understand this? He may have done exceedingly well with regard to jewelry, but he doesn't have experience of an airline industry. So you are assuming that what he has done to the jewelry industry will also be applicable to the airline industry and he will also make sure that that will turn into a profit making company. Assumptions. Okay, so please, please, when you are reading, check this, assumptions. Then, are there any claims? Are there any claims? Especially in analytical essays, the authors make claims. Question the claims. Question the claims. Look at it from a different, contrary perspective. It is also called as a contrarian viewpoint. What is it? Contrarian viewpoint. He is saying something, yes. Don't accept it on face value. Try to look at it from an exactly opposite perspective. Opposite? Perspective. Then you have answers. And then you may question, sir, if I am not reading comprehension, it's a typical type of thing, I mark later. But here I think every mark counts. Am I right? That's why I said don't be composite. Okay? Now, having briefed you about certain small things, what is the kind of a pattern of questions which are generally asked? Generally asked. One type of questions, set of questions, okay, are referred to as the central theme questions. Central theme questions. Please draw a triangle in your notebooks. Draw a triangle in your notebooks. Okay. <coughs> base of the triangle. The base of the triangle, you have a central theme questions or the main idea of the passage. The main idea of the passage. Right? What do you think is the main concern of this passage? Identify the central theme of the passage. Now, a few things here. How do we identify? Let us say the, the passage is running into three or four para paragraphs. Three or four? Paragraphs. Please look at the first sentence of each paragraph. First sentence of each paragraph. I am talking about the first type of question, central theme or main idea, or the author's main concern. Yeah? Now, the first sentence, the first sentence of any paragraph, or a text is what is called as a thematic sentence. Thematic sentence. Thematic sentence. Now, you start linking each of these sentences in each of these paragraphs. One, two, three, four. Four paragraphs. First line. First line only, please. First line of first sentence. Okay? Then, you arrive at the main idea. Broadly. Is that clear? One thing is, you will have to read the paragraph. Read the passage, sir. Read the entire passage. 
reread the entire passage. That is a must. Is that clear? Now, when you start reading these first lines of every paragraph, you are at least sensitized to what is the main idea or the concern of the author. This is one tip. Now, there is a catch here. Read the last sentence of the para last paragraph very closely. Last sentence of the last paragraph. Is that clear? Why I am saying this? Let us say you are reading about a real tragedy. Real tragedy. You have enormous data which is coming in. And they are talking about how increase in budgets, increase in manpower, and the passage may talk about all this. Throughout the paragraph, you may discuss several different aspects with regard to rail safety. Rail safety. Towards the end, towards the end of the para last paragraph, last sentence, the author may say, above all. Above all. Okay? Above all, and then he says something. Okay? Rail safety, I think, is everyone's concern. Okay, it is responsibility not just of railway staff but also people who are travelling so that you know they don't carry inflammable material, so on and so forth. So these words above all, these words above all changes the entire complexion of the passage. You may have discussed several things, but what is he trying to drive home? He is trying to drive home the fact that yes, I think this is the solution. Where is the solution? It lies with each one of us, not just the responsibility of the So, you will have to, while you are reading, look at what we call as transitional words. What is it? Transitional words. In language, this is something which is crucial. Transitional words are sometimes linking words. Okay, first paragraph he is talking something. And he uses and, okay, moreover, in addition to, further. Now these words, these words are called as thought extenders. What are they called? Thought extenders. They extend the thought from one sentence to another sentence or they extend the thought from one paragraph to the other paragraph. What are these? Is the passage having thought extenders? Amplifying a thought, number one. Number two, another set of words. I am not giving you a list of all the thought extenders. You can go on to Google it and you have transitional words. You have a list of so many things which come up. You have another list of words which is called as thought reversers. Thought reversers. Words like but, although, even though, what do they do? They introduce a negative element in the thought. Although he worked hard, he could not score well. Although he has worked hard, you expect a positive outcome, but then to his surprise, there is something negative which is happening. So you have a whole list of words, thought extenders and thought reversals. You will have to constantly monitor Monitor these words. Is the author in the passage extending the thought? Is he reversing the thought? Is he talking about a cause and effect relationship? Since it was raining, I couldn't come to class. Since. Because. You understand this? Is it explaining some cause and effect relationship? I think you'll have to examine this. I'm just giving you a couple of words here and there. Consequently, as a result, we have this inbuilt in passages. I am sure most of us who read passages will come across this. Right? We are talking about this kind of transitional words which you will have to be mindful. Mindful. Is that clear? Yeah. When you are reading a passage, when you are reading a passage, and in case you find something, 
in quotation marks. In quotation marks. A word in quotation marks. Then it means that the author is not using that word in the normal sense, <coughs> usual sense. He is using it in a different sense. I think you have to mark this. Because whenever you have words in quotation marks, words in quotation marks, let us say, uh, it's highly confusing when we are reading certain answers, MCQs, confusing in quotation marks. So he's not using the word confusing in the normal sense of people getting puzzled over it. He's using it in a different sense. It is intriguing. It is questioning the ability of the person to understand. Is that clear? So he's using confusing in a different sense altogether. That's the reason I think you'll have to be mindful about such words in quotation marks. Am I clear? First set of questions. Central theme. One more caution. When you are choosing this answer, when you are choosing this answer, what is the central idea or what is the main concern of the author, so on and so forth, the answer which you are going to choose has to cover all aspects of the passage, not narrowly focus on certain aspects of the passage. Are you getting me? It should cover all the aspects of the passage, not only a particular paragraph or two or three sentences. Because, I mean, I'll tell you, what happens is, the answer is very clearly framed. He picks up certain words from the passage and he includes it in your answer choices. So we are tempted. Oh, this is it. I think this is the answer. Don't fall for this trap. Okay, so answers should not be too narrowly focused on certain portions of the passage, nor they should go beyond the scope of the passage. Okay, then another aspect. Please look at the first word in each of the answer choices. First, word of the answer choices. Okay? Is it